for a couple seconds while um, check our live settings. And yes, we should be live. We um, Maker Camp Live is back for Halloween 2020. And we have daily sessions um, and Kathy Ciceri is gonna kick off our Halloween programming with a spooky glowing disembodied hand. And Kathy has some program programmable options that she's also going uh, to walk us through. And with that, Kathy, I am going to hand it over to you. I will be here watching the chat. So if anybody's watching and following along live, we love questions. We love to hear from you in the chat. So please um, give us any questions, give us a shout out, uh, and we will address your questions live, um, live here with Kathy. Okay, thank you. So yeah, so this is a project that um, I published last year on the Adafruit site. So if you want to see the instructions written or, you know, look at anything again, go to adafruit.com and look up a glowing disembodied hand. Um, so what this does, it's a model of an actual hand made in masking tape and it's hollow so you can put lights inside it. And let's see if I can get it to work. So you have two options for lighting it. One is just to put a regular light in. So this is just an ordinary strand of fairy lights. You can get them at the dollar store. You can get them at Adafruit. You can find them many places. And um, I have seen really nice Halloween versions in orange and purple and with different colors on them. This one is just plain white. And then inside here is also a programmable board. It happens to be an Adafruit Circuit Playground Express. And I don't know if you can see, but there is a little touch pad here and I'll show you how to do that to make it, um, and it's gonna, there it goes. It's, whoops, it's playing music as well. I'm not sure you can hear that, but I can go over that later. All right, I'm gonna turn this off and my other lights are off. And I just wanted to mention, um, oh, well, one other thing. I'm wearing a hat that also I did this week on Adafruit. And the another technique I'm going to be showing you for putting lights for programming the fairy lights is the same technique I used on my hat. And if my hat is working, which uh, it's not lighting up. Oh, hat, why are you not lighting up? Should be on. Oops. Well, anyways, I also have a tutorial for making this hat light up, although it's not doing it live, of course, because things don't like to work when they're live. Um, but you also can look at the directions for this for how to program the fairy lights. But I'm going to try to explain everything um, as I'm going over the project today. Um, one thing I want to mention, there's um, more Halloween Maker Camp um, events coming up, but I am also doing a five week bots, build bots class based on my bots book, which you can see over my shoulder there. And we're gonna be doing all kinds of simple robotic models that actually work made out of everyday stuff and a few programmables similar to what I'm gonna be doing today. So if you're interested in that five week course, it's also on the makercamp.com website. It starts October 28th and there are two sessions. So go check that out if that is something that interests you. All right, now getting to the hand. So, there's going to be a few steps. We're going to first make the masking tape hand. Actually, let me go over the materials. So the only thing you absolutely need to make this hand is masking tape, um, scissors, and actually you need something to space it. You're going to be basically wrapping your hand or in this case, I have a model so I can have both my hands available to work. Um, I just took a glove and filled it with paper to make it stand out. If you have another person with you and you can use their hand for the model, that's also helpful. But in order to keep the um, masking tape, which you're going to be wrapping like a mummy around your hand or your glove, to keep it from sticking and to be able to get into it and cut it open, you put some kind of a spacer. I'm just using a, a straw. You could just um, 
you know, make a straw shaped uh, tube out of paper. You could use a wooden craft stick, something just to give you a little space there so you'll be able to cut it later. So masking tape, scissors, some kind of a hand and some kind of a spacer. And then, as I said, for the light up part, you can use ordinary fairy lights, strand lights in any color. You can use the programmable part that's inside. This is a um, Adafruit Circuit Playground Express. As I said, you could also use a micro bit or you could use um, another Adafruit board called a Gemma. This one's a Gemma and let's see if I can get this one to work. Turn that on and there we go. So if you can see that and what you can do with these lights, they don't change color, but they, you can make them flash on and off and you can make them get brighter and dimmer with make code programming. So make code, which I'm going to be going over later, is free online programming from Microsoft. Um, it's very similar to Scratch if you use, use Scratch and I really like playing around with it. It's very easy to get started. One other lighting option. This is a um, now I don't even remember what this was called, but these are programmable lights. This is also from Adafruit. If you go to the Adafruit guide for the hand, you'll find the name of this, which is um, it's not a strand because the other thing is a strand. It's a strip, I think it's um, but it, the nice thing about it is it has alligator clips and so that makes it easy to connect to a board like the Circuit Playground Express. Um, with the fairy lights, I'm going to be showing you how to use a similar technique to connect it to the board, but you have to do a little cutting and um, wire stripping, but we will get to that later. Okay, back to the hand. So you, you have your hand, I'm going to be using this, you have your masking tape, and you have your straw. So we're going to be making the first layer of tape with the sticky side of the tape facing out. This is so that the non-sticky side, the papery side, is facing in so it doesn't stick to your hand or your glove or whatever you're using as a model. So in order to avoid having more sounds of masking tape ripping than we absolutely need to, I pre-ripped some strips of masking tape off of my roll. So here's the strip of masking tape. Um, some tips actually, let me give you some tips. Um, you can anchor your masking tape to the straw to get started. What are my other tips? You don't want to make it too tight so that if you're using a real hand, you don't cut off the circulation to the person. Um, and you're going to be doing it mummy style. Oh, and the last one is we're going to start off with some longer pieces because we want to be able to wrap all the way around the hand. But once you get past the first few pieces, you can use shorter pieces. It's very similar to paper mache. And you can just, you're, just, you're going to see how it works, but it's going to just layer one over the other. And then you don't have to, um, it won't be quite as awkward as working with the longer strips of masking tape. So I'm going to get started here. I've got my straw, I've got my masking tape with the sticky side out, and I'm going to start with the palm. And I'm going to hold this in place while doing it backwards so that you can see. All right, that one went pretty well. So I've got a loop of masking tape. I've got my straw in the more or less right place. You're going to be cutting this hand open to get your real hand out up through the palm. So the straw only needs to go up to where the fingers start. And I'm going to wrap this around until I run out of tape. And then I will go in a different direction. And one nice thing about this project is that it doesn't matter if it's a little messy looking because it kind of looks nice if it's messy looking, kind of looks like a real mummy, I think. All right, so I have my straw and I'm starting to tape it around to the palm there. So we're going to do the palm first. And oops, and this is where it gets messy. Now it's sticking to both hands at once. And I'm going to turn it towards me so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so you want to crisscross it. If you've ever made like a toilet paper mummy 
you just kind of crisscross it. And again, not being neat kind of makes it look better. All right, so I've got two strips there. I want to keep that straw in the middle because that's where I'm going to cut. And I'm just going to keep going. Maybe one more on the palm. And then after we get the palm kind of done, we're going to move on to, let's do the thumb first. And again, you want to keep that sticky side out. This one, this piece got a little twisted, but I just twisted it back around and we can fix that later. All right, so now I'm going to start on the thumb. And when you are working on the fingers, you want to keep them separated so that you can get in there. So the thumb being naturally separated is the easiest one to start with. And here I have two shorter strips that are sticking together. So let me unstick them. Okay. And again, with the sticky side out, you're going to wrap around the thumb. As you are adding one piece of tape to the next, you want to make sure you're overlapping so that they're all connected. And although you only need two layers to do this, it doesn't hurt to have extra layers. The only thing you would want to avoid is having so many layers that it's too thick for the lights to shine through. But masking tape is pretty thin and I don't think that will be an issue. So I'm starting to do the thumb. It's kind of bulky, but again, you can kind of squish it down and pinch it and squish it and get it to the shape that you want. So I'm just wrapping the thumb around and with the sticky side out, covering up the top. And when we're done with this first layer, we're going to do a second layer with the sticky side in and the papery side out and that way you'll be able to handle this thing without it sticking. So this is the hardest part, but you want to make sure pretty much everything is covered that you don't have gaps like that because when it's sticky side in, you don't want it to stick to the skin or the glove. Um, I had another point I was going to make and I don't remember, but it will come back to me. All right, so we've got that first. Oh, I know it. So you're posing your hand or your glove. And because this is a Halloween decoration that should look a little spooky, you might want to make claws. So not only have your fingers spread out, but kind of round them so that it looks like a scary hand coming from the grave. I actually, um, this reminded me of Thing from the Addams Family, one of my favorite shows growing up. And I do have this playing the theme from the Addams Family. If I can uh, do that a little bit later when we're playing with the make code, I'll show you how to do that. All right, so I've got the palm and the thumb down and now I'm going to start on the fingers. It, I don't know, see if you can do what I'm doing here, but I'm taking the end and keeping it on the outside and putting kind of the middle of the tape on the inside between the fingers just so that the ends are easier to work with. This is probably a little long. I think I'm going to rip this in half. There we go. Now it's a little easier to work with. And this finger is not attached. It's not connected to the rest of the hand. So let's do that. We'll do that on the back of the hand. Just make sure that it is connected to the rest of the hand because you don't want the fingers coming off. That would not be scary at all. And let me take another longish piece and, and I'm sticking help. Okay. All right. I'm just going to keep wrapping this around mummy style until I have some more fingers done. I don't think I'm going to do the whole thing. I do have one that's finished at the stage where you take it off. So when I show you enough of this so that you've got the idea, I think I will just move on to that. All right, so I've got thumb, finger, palm. And as I was saying, you could 
take little pieces and make sure it's connected to the rest of the hand over there and maybe a little bit over here. See that it's all getting connected. You want the tape to go all the way down to the wrist because right now this is standing on a cup, but if you want to be able to put lights inside, do you want it to be able to kind of stand on its own? Um, so I'll just show you. So even though you did the palm, you're kind of go back and just kind of work your way down mummy style, wrapping that straw in there. Excuse me, I've got two pieces stuck together. Yeah, this is a lot of fun if you like getting sticky. Do -do -do. All right. And I'm just wrapping it around and around and around. There we go. Okay. So, and I've got a little extra loop that kind of stuck out there. That's not going to make a difference. And you don't have to go just around and around. As I said, you could go straight up the back. Make sure those fingers are on tight. So if you can kind of see what's happening there. All right, so you're going to continue on doing that with all the other fingers. And I am going to then show you. So the second layer Assuming that this is all covered now in the first layer with the sticky side out, you're going to take more tape with the sticky side in and just start going right over that. And this way you're covering up the sticky bit so that you can then touch it and it won't be all sticky. So you're going to do the whole hand in one layer with sticky side out and then a whole second layer of sticky side in and this is where you can fix any holes. If you have a hole somewhere as you're on your second layer, you can always just take a piece and put it sticky side out again and just cover it over again. Like I said, little pieces are fine. You can kind of try to bend it into a claw, whatever shape you want. And again, the straw was sticking up a little bit too much, so we can pull that right down to there. All right, now I'm going to move on and show you the one I did earlier. Okay, so here's one I did earlier. It's got the first layer and the second layer done. Let me make sure I just look at my, okay. So I um, haven't skipped any steps. All right, so now we're at the part where we're going to take it off your hand or your glove. Um, I am going to switch to my top-down camera so you can see what I'm doing here. There we go. All right. So this one, the straw is orange and there's a hand. And a straw is nice because you can actually put the scissors right into the straw and cut right through the straw, especially if it's really tight on your hand, tighter than you had wanted to be. If you're using a glove, then obviously you can kind of compress the glove a little bit and stick the scissor next to the straw or next to the piece of cardboard or wooden uh, craft stick or whatever you're using. But if you have a straw, you can cut right through the straw and just keep going. And you're going to cut right up the middle of that hand to almost where the fingers start. And I'm going to, because I can, I'm going to go next to the straw and have one less layer I have to cut through. And this one has got a few layers on it already, so it's kind of thick. All right, there we go. I'm going to go a little bit higher. All right, it's like taking a cast off. All right, so there's the glove. There's a straw, we don't need that anymore. And you can take that glove out or hand out 
if it's your hand. And this is kind of stuck. So let me pull that out. There we go. This one finger. I used a heavy kind of winter ski glove. So my hand is pretty big. So I have plenty of room inside to put lights. We don't need the glove anymore. So you can see my hand is pretty big. And then the last step of making the hand is that you're going to take more tape and close it. Um, but we can leave it open for now so I can show you how to put the lights inside. And of course, if there's any things that you want to fix on it, you can always add more tape. All right, so let's take, hmm, where do I have the, okay. So here's just the plain fairy lights. And the nice thing about this particular kind that has wire is you can bend the wire and it will stay in that shape. So I can actually bend some finger shapes out of this wire and stick inside the fingers. And then we'll have each individual finger lighting up. So let me see how that looks. So I'm going to put this one in the first finger and the next one in the second finger. I'm just putting these lights right inside the fingers. And I'll make one more looped of wire light strand here to put in the pinky. And that should be enough. And now I'm going to close it up and we'll see how that works. Excuse me for the ripping of the masking tape noise that you're about to hear. Once I get this peeled off, let's see. Do it all at once, like ripping off a bandaid. All right. And then we'll just take a few little pieces. All right. And you can cover up that seam really nicely so you can't even see that it's there. You don't even need to completely cover it. Just a few pieces will make it disappear. And I'll show you on my other sample hand that I kind of leave it open a little bit so I can get in and, and use it as a sample to show people. So there you see the hand, once you press the ends of the tape down, you can't even really see where that seam is. And let's see what it looks like with the lights on. Ooh, so that looks pretty nice. And I'm just flicking the on off switch to make that flash. All right, so there is your hand and it's pretty much going to stand on its own. Again, you can add more tape to the, let me go back to the top. Oops, excuse me. I just turned myself off. I didn't mean to do that. Hold on. Here we go. Okay, front video. All right, so if it's falling over, you can add more tape to make it even. You could tape it to the table that you're putting it on or tape it to a piece of cardboard. Um, and that is pretty flexible as to what you're doing with it. And like I said, you could even just put a regular flashlight in here, just anything to make it light up. Looks really cool. Um, but I'll show you now some ways to make it programmable. Kathy, before we move on, how many layers of masking tape would you recommend so that you're still illuminating the light through? Um, well, you need a minimum of two because you want the two sticky sides together. Um, are you asking like what's the maximum before you can't see the lights? Yeah, somewhat, yes, the maximum so that it has that structural stability, but still uh, able to see the lights through it. I guess it depends on the lights. I think you would have to test it, yes. 
Um, yeah. It depends on your lights. It depends on your masking tape. Um, this one's got three layers in the front and you can't see the lights too much. Well, it's hard for you to see in the camera, but in real life, it's kind of dark on the palm where I have extra layers um, and it's coming through nicely in the fingers. Um, it's also going to, the light is going to be much more visible if you are putting this in a, you know, dark window or on your porch or something and it's dark out in a brightly lit room, it's going to be harder to see the lights. So depends on circumstances. All right. So I'm going to show you some cool stuff with the programming. And I'm going to open up this sample. And as I said, I just kind of have this tape closed kind of like a door so I can open it up and show people what's going on. So this is the version that um, I used to write up the project for Adafruit. And it's a little more complicated than you probably need to make it. But I like playing around with different stuff. So that's why it's so complicated. But I'm going to show you what I did here was I traced my hand because this one was made of my own hand with my other hand um, that was a little hard to do it on myself <laughs> but this is my hand so then I trace my hand on a piece of um, just heavy paper cardstock and I used some conductive fabric tape um, I believe I mean Adafruit ca carries this and I believe um, you can get it at maker shed maker tape and I have it somewhere and it is hidden under something else. There we go. So it just comes in a roll and it is fabric conductive tape and you can use it like wiring on a circuit. So I have here, maybe I'll go back to my top down view so you can see that. Okay, so I have my Circuit Playground Express here and this is what actually turns it on and off. And then I put um, little LEDs. You could use normal LEDs with wires. These are called uh, sequins. And they just are each, they're different colors, but they're each one color. They don't change colors. Um, so that's one other version you can do. And each one of these is connected to a circuit. Um, and it has, and it will turn on with this, this one is a touchpad that will turn it on and off. And each of these are programmed in make code, which I'll show you in a minute, so that they turn on and off at different times according to your program. Let me see if I can show you this. So there it is booting up. And I'm going to touch this, which is connected to pin A1 on the Circuit Playground Express. And in my program, which I'll show you in a minute, you'll see that that's the on off switch and if you can kind of hear that that's the uh, Adams family tune and then it oops I'm turned that off and then it shines orange at the end um, so this is actually this is just like doing paper circuits it's exactly like a paper circuit the um, the ground wire goes down the back and then the wire that carries the signal to each light is connected to a different pin on the Circuit Playground Express. Um, so that is another way to get lights inside it. And if you wanted to take just a fairy light and just have it flash on and off and get dimmer and brighter, that's a lot simpler. And I can show you how to set that up. I've got to untangle this first. Okay. And I have one that is already done and that is here. Okay. So in order to attach a light like this to the Circuit Playground Express, you need to detach it from the battery pack that it comes with. 
And in order to do that, the first thing you do is make sure it doesn't have batteries in it. So we'll take those batteries out. And now with the batteries out, and here's the two coin batteries that run that, you can just take scissors and snip that. And then there are two wires here and one of them is a ground wire and one of them is a signal wire and they are insulated with some clear plastic. And what you can do is just pull these apart very easily. So now the two wires are separated. You can see that. And then I'm going to strip them. And again, if this is something you want to do, but I'm going a little too fast. If you go to my hat tutorial on Adafruit, you'll see how to do this. Um, so what you need to do now is to strip off the plastic insulation to expose the metal wire that's inside. That is what is carrying the electricity. Um, the best way to do that is with an actual wire stripper. And I'll do one with a wire stripper and I'll try doing one with a scissor, which you can do, it may take a few tries. But a um, wire stripper has little um, holes in it that fit around the wire. So it's cutting into that plastic, but not through the metal wire. And then you just kind of pull off the insulation and you have the metal wire exposed. Let me see if that will show up on that camera. If you can see that, not the best camera, but there's that clear plastic insulation and then the metal wire sticking out. And you can try to do that with the scissors if that's all you have. I know some people actually do it with their long nails, but my nails are not suited for that. So if, what I'm doing here is basically the same thing that the wire stripper does automatically. I'm trying to cut through the plastic, but not through the wire. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but I'm cutting not all the way through and then I'm trying to see if I can pull that off. Without cutting it. Usually what happens is I do this a few times and cut through the wire by accident. This one actually came off pretty nicely. So now we have our two ends exposed. And now we have to figure out which one is negative and which one is positive. Can you see these two wires here? Let's get some stuff out of the way. So I've got two wires here. It's a little hard to see clear. And I'm taking one of the coin batteries that came with it. And I'm going to figure out which is positive and negative because the coin battery is marked positive on the positive side. And so when this strand lights up, we'll know that, which it's not doing, that I've got the positive wire touching the positive side of the battery. So I'm flipping it around. Okay. So now the light is lit up and the positive wire must be touching the positive side and the negative wire must be touching the negative side because if they weren't, it would not light up. So you want to mark which side is positive so that you remember and I just take a Sharpie and draw right on that plastic insulation there. So I remember which is positive. So the one that's marked is positive and the one that is not marked is negative. And so now we can attach this to the Circuit Playground Express. And I am going to, I know it's hard to see, I'm going to switch to my um, share screen so that you can see a better a diagram of the Circuit Playground Express. All right, so hopefully you can see that. And um, 
I cannot see chat anymore, so I'm hoping that you can, in fact, oh, there it is. Okay. So I've got the chat box open. So let me know if you're still having trouble seeing there. But um, you'll see that there's a diagram of the Circuit Playground Express. And this is the program that I'm going to be loading onto it that will make an ordinary strand of lights um, just blink on and off or get dimmer and brighter. I have two choices. And the, these two, you see that all of these pins are numbered. So this one, and they are touch pads, touch A7. This is number A7. You can see that right there. And this one is A1, which is over here. And then there's A2, A3, whatever. So um, I'm going to attach the signal part, the signal wire, which is the positive wire to A2 which is over here. And the negative wire I'm going to attach to ground. And that's how you make a circuit. You need to have um, two ends connected and the power is going to come from the board. So the board will either be plugged into the computer and getting power from that, or like it was in my sample hand, it could have a battery pack and be separate from the computer. So, all right, so what I'm going to do, and I'll go back to the top down, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see it, but I'm going to just take these wires that I exposed and wrap the negative one around the ground and the positive one around A2, and then I can load this program onto the board and it should work. And I'll explain how the program works then. So let me go back to, I'm going to stop share for a minute. And sorry, this is so blurry. So I have my two wires here. I'm going to pull them even further apart. The one that is marked, I'm going to do second. The one that is not marked is ground. And on my board here, this is the ground. There's several ground pads. I'm going to use this one. And I'm just going to insert the exposed metal part of the wire right through there and just Fold it, wrap it around. Oops, this is actually turned on. Let me unplug it from the computer for a second. All right. All right, now it has no power going to it. I should have done that first. All right. And now I'm taking the other wire, which is um, the one that's marked is positive, and I am going to just wrap it around the hole that says A2. And if you happen to have some conductive tape, you can use that to secure this so it doesn't come unwrapped. But I'm hoping that this will, in fact, work the way it is. Let's see. Whoops, that just came right out. So let me wrap that around again. All right. All right, so I have the wires attached. I don't know if you can see, but I've got the ground and the A2. And I'm going to switch to the front camera just to see if that is any better for seeing what's going on here. All right, this is a slightly better camera. So if you can see, I've got the two wires attached to those two um, pads on there. All right, so you can, and again, you can go on Adafruit and see how I did this. I did it with a Gemma, but it's the same process. So I'm gonna go back to screen sharing so you can see the make code again. Okay, all right. So what is happening here? Let me make this a little bigger so I can see what's going on here. All right. So as I said, I have two st um, stacks of code. If you've uh, used make code before, if you've used scratch, you have menus here 
with different kinds of blocks and you can just open them up and pull them onto your workspace here and then tell them what to do. This one would make something happen if you push button A. Um, but you can, you see all the other options you have. You have the touch pads, you have buttons A and B, so and so forth. So, and let me show you because um, you don't even need a board in order to play around with make code because when you program it, it will show up on this um, simulation. So if I wanted to make it play music, I'll make it play a sound and let's choose a different sound. Let's choose a magic wand sound. All right. So when you see that little green light, that means that it's ready to test. I'm going to put my cursor over here and I'm going to click on button A and it should play a sound. Uh, I have my audio muted, so you're not going to hear the sound. Let me do lights instead. Here's a show animation. All right, let's do this. Wait till that green light comes on. All right, sorry about that. All right, so now you can see this is how this works. It's input because you're inputting some uh, command telling it what to do. The input is that I've pressed button A and then the output is it's going to play an animation that makes colored lights go around on the board. So that's how it works in general and I have um, and I can share this link later. We can share it on the uh, Maker Camp page, but you can actually find this. I shared it online, so there's a link to it. It's called CPX, which is Circuit Playground Express Glow Hand and Strand for the LED strand. All right, so let's go through what's going on here. Um, in order to tell pin A2 what to do, which is we want it to go high and turn on and then go low and turn off. We have to get one more menu that's not showing up here. If I click advanced, I get this red menu that says pins. And then from there, I can grab which block I want. So digital gives you the option to just turn it on or off. So that's what we're going to try first. And because it's not showing the external lights here, um, I have a sound which is also not going to play because I have the audio off on this screen. So let me, I'm going to throw that out and I'm going to throw that out and I'm going to make this play an animation. So you know that it ran. And then this one, which I got from the lights here, just turns all the lights off. So when I touch A7, I'm going to click right here on A7. It should make that animation go. It's going to repeat four times and then it's going to turn off. Hopefully. There it goes and now it's turned itself off. All right, so we know that that program ran. Um, and then the other one that's over here. So you have digital and you have analog. And on the Circuit Playground Express, these different pins that you can connect to, some of them can do both. So I'm using A2, which I believe can do both. And we'll find out if this works or not. Um, so this one just turns it on and off. And this one gives you a choice of making it from zero, so it's completely off, to whatever you want to set it to, up to um, 1023. And that's the highest. Um, general, I, in general, I like to set it somewhere in the middle so that you're not um, using up your battery or blowing out your LEDs. Since we're using an LED that's not designed to use with this, although it will work. Um, so, and I just keep duplicating these blocks and use as many as I need. So analog lets me turn A2 on. It's kind of like a dimmer switch. It'll go up and down. So it starts at zero, so it's off. And then 200 is on a little bit, 400 is on a little bit more. 600 is going to be 
as bright as it gets and then it's going to go down. So I believe I have this program on this board already and I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to go back to, I'm going to stop screen sharing and I'm going to go to my top down screen and let's see if this works. All right. So right now it's all green, which is just telling you it's ready to put more code on. Um, I am going to just see if this code is already on here. So I'm going to push the reset button and it was A7, I believe. No, I don't remember. I believe it was A7 that was going to make it turn on and off. So let's see what happens. Is it going to work? Ah, and now it's not working. Well, something's happening there. <gasps> it worked. Look at that. Let me do that again. And it played music. You can hear that. I think the touchpad is a little finicky when it's plugged into the computer. I think that's my issue, this one. And are this, the strand lights are coming on. There they go, flashing on and off. Now, I don't remember what the other button was, so I'm going to go back and check it again. Um, it was A1 was the other one to touch. All right. All right, so um, I'm going to touch A1 and see if the lights get dimmer and brighter. And again, it's fitting. Oh, there it goes. <gasps> Did you see that? It actually worked. They got brighter, they got dimmer, and they played that music. So With a simple microcontroller and Microsoft Make Code and just a little string of lights from the dollar store, you can do all kinds of cool lighting effects and you can put that inside your glowing hand and make it light up. So let's, uh, See how it looks inside the hand here. Can you see that? I'm not sure it's lighting up too much. Let me put more lights in here. Well, it's a little hard to see inside, but as I said, if this was dark out, it would be much brighter. Can kind of see that a little bit. I could also, as I said, um, change the brightness in the make code. I've somehow lost my zoom screen so I can't screen share it. Where'd it go? Oh, hold on a second. Sorry. Go back to make code. So as I said, I set the brightness to just go up to 600, but if you wanted, you could make it brighter. You can make it go all the way up to 1,023. And if you were afraid about batteries running out, if you wanted this to be your, you know, porch decoration, you could um, use a regular USB cable and um, plug it in like you were charging a phone or you could keep it connected to a computer. Um, and that is pretty much my glowing hand project. So Sienna, anything else I need to mention that I didn't mention? Well, I, I don't think so. I think it looks fantastic. I was trying to um, let our viewers know and I wanted to put into the chat, um, I, uh, was not able to get the link in time, but if you check out makeprojects.com, there is a Halloween contest going on right now, and this would be a great 
um, entry into that. And I'd love to see, you know, we'd be able to see all the different iterations and designs um, that people come up with. So if you make a glowing disembodied hand, please share with us, um, hashtag make together. Um, and that way it will feed into our social feeds. And I did want to just reiterate the um, camp that you have coming up, the Build Bots with Kathy Ciceri. Um, I am going to place, I have that link here. I'm going to place that into the chat. Okay. Um, and we do have two sessions going right now. There is a 3 p.m. session, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern session. And um, we also have, is it 3 or 4 p.m. Pacific? I'm trying to. I think it's 4 p.m. And 4 p.m. Pacific. Yes. So we do, uh, we're trying to get a few more folks into those classes. When you're signing up, there is a place to um, put in who referred you. So I just as a challenge out there to our Maker Camp viewers that if you get three or more people to, um, to sign up for the camp, we have a special little um, make makey, our robot here, a little makey figurine that we will get out to you um, from us at Make Community and Maker Fair. And um, we just want to see this class happen and, and, and be successful. And we're looking forward to it. So that starts on October 28th. And with that, I think you did a fabulous project. Thank you so much for kicking off our Halloween programming on Maker Camp Live. You're welcome. And I'm glad most of the stuff worked. That's, that's a win. It did. And that hat, we saw the hat light up right before we started streaming. So I don't understand. Oh, uh, I think the batteries are on their way out. It's always the battery. It's always bad. Well, it's, or, or the connection or the, it's going to work now. Yeah, I, I saw a little light there, of course. <laughs> Just don't, there we go. As <laughs> soon as you put it on the head, it's going to There we go. There it goes. <laughs> All right. See, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And um, hopefully we're going to see some disembodied hands come up and see some, um, some activity from the build bots camp. So thank you. Yeah, I'd love to see it. If you put anything on Twitter, you can tag me so I can see it. I'd love to see stuff that you're doing. Well, thank you and have a good night, everybody.